Hi folks, Martin Butler here again with another t-shirt printing video. And we're going to do something a little bit different this time because I get a lot of people asking me about dark t-shirt transfers and the way they feel on the t-shirt, they're not as good as light t-shirt transfers. Well, they are to a certain extent a bit heavier than the white t-shirt transfers, but even so, a lot of people say, oh, I'll wash them once or twice and then they start to peel and crack. Well, as I've said to you before, there's so many different makes out there. The makes I use, I've used for literally for the past 10 years. If you look at my playlist with regards to my t-shirt transfer videos, I actually did a t-shirt video, I think it was on the 1st of June this year where I printed this t-shirt, let me show you. Now you may remember that one, I did that with a batch of other ones, and again what I was actually uh, drawing you to in this t-shirt transfer video was that you can use vinyls as well as a dark t-shirt transfer and create sort of pretty nice looking t-shirts. And as I say, this was six months, well, five and a half months ago I've done this one. And let me just get you a bit near. This has been washed. I've just asked Sharon, she said it's been washed about 30 times. So roughly about once every five days it's been washed. So you can see it's an older t-shirt now because it's sort of got that sort of oldy sort of feel to it and sort of well-worn feel. And just to let you see that the colors on the transfer haven't cracked or faded in any way whatsoever. Now, as I said to you before, when we advertise these, we do advertise them as uh, a low temperature wash, in other words, 40, temp 40 degrees C and below. That's just to cover the t-shirt transfer. The vinyl is actually rated at sort of a 60 degree wash. You can wash that at full high temperature anyway. But you're not supposed to tumble dry these. But I've just asked Sharon what she does when she does wash these. She says this has been tumble dried. And as you can probably see there, now there is a texture to it, just like there is with vinyl. So you will get a texture to it. But I'm sure you'll see that, that there's no cracking or fading there whatsoever. And as I said to you, this has been washed over 30 times over a five month period. It's been well worn, it's been worn every week. And I'm sure you'll see there that there is actually no problems at all with the dark t-shirt transfers uh, that I use there. So that's that. And bearing in mind, as I said, there's many, many t-shirt transfers out there. And people always ask me, oh, what's the cheapest to buy? Well, it's not about the cheapest. The ones I use probably ain't the cheapest, but longevity you've just seen for yourself there. Uh, with, with regards to that t-shirt there. So anyway, you don't actually only need to use them transfers on t-shirts. We're going to be using them, as I have done before when I have my other hat press, on caps. So I've got three hats here, and we're going to just put on three, again, coloured t-shirt transfers. And I've also created some square album covers, which, as you know, I'm, I'm pretty retro. I like the old 1980s music and 70s music and whatever. So I've printed off a couple of album covers here. Again, these aren't for selling. These are just pure demonstration purposes. I've pulled these images off of Google. And I mean, if you want to go and have a little test for yourself, you can do the same as what I've done here, basically. So, but we're gonna be pressing three hats. And we've also got these things here. Now these are little tote bags, or I think they call them a tote bag. Now again, over here in the UK at the moment, the government is making people pay five pence a bag and there's a big uproar about not having to buy a plastic bag or whatever. Anyway, cut a long story short, these bags have been available for a long, long time. And we have had a batch, but we've never really sold them or used them at all or advertised them. But now we've got these uh, bag, for, call it a bag for life, or re reusable bag, let's say. We're just gonna put a graphic in the middle. And what drew us to this attention, and we thought we might start selling these now, is that when we had a big order of t-shirts about uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, for how many t-shirts, Sharon? Yeah, we only done a, a batch of 12 t-shirts for somebody, Sharon's just told me. And as a result of that, we took the uh, graphic which we created for them, and we just plonked it in the middle of there, and just put this in as a free gift. Anyway, they were so pleased with these, that they now want a batch of these to order. So we're pushing these out for four pound each, to actually create, or to buy these in. How much are these, Sharon? We buy these in, she's just told me, she's the other side of the camera, at 34 pence. That is, I don't know, about 60 cents in American money, I suppose. I don't know what it'd be, it'd probably be about 54, 52 pence in Euro, something like that, I'm not sure, but anyway, it's 34 pence UK money. And as I say, we put a sticker on the middle there, 
which we're going to show you. Again, a dark t-shirt transfer. It doesn't matter about the feel on a thing like this, just like it doesn't matter about the feel on a thing like this. People are mostly concerned with dark t-shirt transfers on a t-shirt. You will get a texture, as I've said to you there, but at the end of the day, you can still produce garments like that. Don't worry about that. So dark t-shirt transfers, we're going to use on this now. So we've got both presses running now. We've got our uh, Galaxy heat press here, which is the, the 16 by 20 auto slide, which we've got up to temperature now at 190 degrees. And we've also got our Galaxy hat press as well. That's up to temperature at 190 degrees as well. Both are set for 30 seconds. So first of all, let's take the uh, tote bag and we're going to do both sides of the tote bag. So first of all, let's, let's put this under the uh, machine and get this pressed. Right, so like everything, we're going to just stick the bag under and we're going to give it a press just to get any moisture out of it. Like that, I'm just going to pull that down and we're going to, don't forget we're going to be pressing on both sides of this, so just give it a five second blast. And as you can see, steam's coming off it, which is indicating, and if you feel that, there is moisture in there. So that has actually got rid of the moisture. So I'm going to place it back on there. And don't forget, I'm upside down at the moment. And I'm going to take one of our graphics and I'm going to place that in the centre of the bag and quickly lay our Teflon sheet on top, pull the handle down and let that count down for 30 seconds. So as I say, even if you can buy a batch of these, they're only 30, 30 odd pence each and have a little go. And if you've got a big order, just sling a couple of these in or one or two of these in and you might get orders off of that as well. Because a lot of people like the branding. If they've got their own logos or whatever, they, you know, they like branding or whatever. So up, up she pops. Now again, we've just pressed that now. Well, with the dark t-shirt transfers, they're really quite, they're a cold peel product. You don't want to go whipping that cover off right when it's uh, basically hot. So, right, it's cooled off a bit now. So I'm just going to just remove that like that. And as you can see there, there's our tra uh, transfer on our little tote bag there. And now I'm just going to quickly press the other side. Now again, I forget, I've got a Teflon sheet on the bottom as well as the top here, so I'm going to be pressing this twice, don't forget. So I'm just turning that around like that. I'm just going to turn that knob down a bit more, just to give it a bit more pressure. And I'm going to take my second graphic. Again, this is your T-shirt transfers, which I print on my inkjet printer with cheap dye, uh, cheap, cheap dye inks. So there you go. So when we put that onto the bag, Again, stick it in the middle or wherever you want it. I'm happy with it there. Get me cover sheet. Just drop it over. You want to do that pretty quick, as I said to you, because they will start to curl up under the heat. So ideally, if you've got a clam press where you swing the heat plate away, then you can lay it on and then bring the heat source in. But I haven't got the, the space for that. So you make do with what you've got. And we quickly just lay that on top. And then we pull down again for another 30 seconds. So as I say, yeah, it's not about t-shirt, we call, we call them t-shirt transfers, but they're actually dark transfers for dark uh, garments because they, they, they use the white colour of the transfer because you don't have, in an inkjet print, you don't have white ink. So you're using the white paper, which is a transfer paper, to give you the white. But as I say, they're, they're, they're actually the ideal for different types of things like garments like this, for example. Right, I'm going to turn that off now because I don't need that on anymore and it's very, very hot in here with two heat presses on. So just give that a couple of seconds and I'm going to just gently pull it away like that. And as you can see, and I'm going to be careful how I lift it up on the bottom one because I've got a transfer at the bottom. A lot of people say, oh, can you double press them or stuff like that? Technically speaking, the one underneath has been double pressed, but it doesn't really matter to be honest with you. And there you go. There's the one on the other side still, as you can probably see there. And there's the one on this side. And again, a nice little garment, not a garment, a nice little object there for carrying about. I don't know how you carry these, do you like that? It's over the shoulder. So here we go, look. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, so they work. They do a job. Little tote bags. That's just another thing you can do with dark t-shirt transfers. That'll be very, very durable. The ink is actually embedded into the transfer itself now. So you've got no worries about it coming off. And if you've got a, a, a heat press with good temperature coverage all over the top, you've got enough pressure 
and you put it down for the correct time and the correct duration, you should end up with the same result as me. And let's have a little look at our hat press now with the free transfers that I've created. Let me just show you what I've created. Now again, all I've done here is I've measured the cap and the height from the width of the transfer that I wanted. I've gone onto Google Images and pulled out these images and all I've done is create a box in Photoshop which is five inches long by two and a quarter inches high. That was the measurement that I wanted. And then I dragged the image into the box and then I cropped it to size. And that's basically all I've done there. And as you can see there, it's an older specials aka logo type thing from the album cover. This was actually taken from an album cover which they had called Gangsters if I remember rightly. And all we're going to do is lay it on three different coloured caps here. We've got a green one, we've got a black one and we've also got a, a dark blue one. And what these panels are is a five panel cap. If we open up the hat up like that, you can see we've got one, two, three, four and one big panel at the front which means this is a five panel cap. You want a five panel cap because if you had a six panel cap you'd have a seam down the centre there and when you put a transfer over you'd have obviously a seam sticking through. So anyway let's get these on the heat press and um, we'll press these logos. Right, so first of all, I'm going to uh, put the cap on. You've also got some cardboard in the back of these caps, by the way, when, you, when these come new. So um, I'll try one with the cardboard in, and then the next one I'll take the cardboard out and see if it makes any difference. So we'll put this one in first, shall we? This is the black one. Now again, you want to get this sitting correctly on the uh, heat press. You don't want the peak to be touching the actual heating element. So we'll just pull it forward enough so we get it in, in the position we want. And we'll just push that little cap, cap uh, clamp down on, on top. And then you've got to be pretty quick with these. I've got the graphic there and I've also cut down to size some Teflon paper that I'll just lay literally straight on top of it when I've uh, placed the, um, the graphic in place. So again, place it in place before it starts curling up. Lay that on top like that and then pull this down for the correct time. There we go. Nice firm pressure. Again, 190 degrees for 30 seconds for this hat press. And this is using, as I said to you before, the dark t-shirt transfer, call it t-shirt transfer paper. Let's call it a transfer paper for dark items. Like this cap is a dark cap. So we're hoping it should turn out all right. This is on the black cap with the cardboard uh, packaging insert still inside. So we'll see what this does anyway. Here the buzzer. So we're just gonna lift it up now like that. Just going to leave it for a second or take it out of there now. I've still got the, uh, the, the, the uh, actual trim on top like that and I'll take it off with you so that you can see it at the same time. Oh that's terrible. Now as I say I've done this I haven't done this one before so I don't know why that's gone like that. So now as you can see we're going to experiment now so it's all a part of a learning curve so I'm now going to do the next one and take out that back cardboard strip and I'm also going to pre-press, because I didn't actually pre-press if, if you remember rightly. So we're going to try the next one in there now. And I'm going to take the cardboard insert out. So it's just a hat. I'm going to put it in place. Pull it forward like that. And this time I'll give it a pre-press, which I didn't do before. Give it a 5 or 10 second pre-press. We go for 10 seconds on this one. There we go. So that's a pre-press. And as you can see, the steam coming up from the item there. So um, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to place the graphic on once more. And then cover her up. And then pull it down again. And let's see what happens with this one. See, I'm showing you things that could happen to you. I've not used these uh, hats with the transfer papers in this way before. And I'm not too sure why that's actually come out like that. So again, it's a learning curve. Be prepared to waste a few things. These are only sort of very, very cheap anyway, so um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I normally press vinyls on hats anyway, so... Um, right, there we go. Up she comes. And we'll take this one out. And already, I can see this one's okay. There we go. Take that, take it off, look. Absolutely perfect. Can you see that? So the two differences I've done in... The difference between them two, which you could come across, one, I took that cardboard out, and two, I pre-pressed the hat, got the moisture out of it. And as you can see there, 
two totally different results. The constant of the heat press was exactly the same, so the temperature was the same, the duration was the same. So just to prove that was the case, we're gonna do number three again. We're gonna take the inside cardboard out, we're gonna put it on the hat press, and then we're gonna pull that down and clamp it in place. And then pre-press as we have done with the other one. Come down and pre-press that for 10 seconds. Again, new equipment, new materials, new hats I've just bought, these are new ones, learning curve. There we go, 10 seconds pre-pressed. Exactly the same transfer. And pop that on there. And then cover her up and drop her down. Again for your 30 seconds. So yeah, I mean, to, to worry about the, the texture on a, on a hat, for example, of a graphic, it's nowhere near as critical as a garment like a t-shirt where it's more flexible. So this is a firm cap, you're not gonna worry about that, but you can create any total images that you want, obviously, on a cap. These are just what I've used, and um, you know, you can obviously use what you want. This is just an experiment. Two, one, go, there we go, up. I'll just turn that off at the back. I'll find a switch, there we go. Again, release the clamp, bring it up to you so there's no tomfoolery, and then pull off the actual image. And I'm sure you can see there that those two are perfect. And that one, that first one, was a bit of a nightmare. And what we did, as I said to you, was take out the inner cardboard thing and pre-press it. Personally, I would imagine it would probably be the moisture that's caused that, I don't know, but I'd have to test it again and probably waste another cap. I don't need to do that now. I'm just gonna pull them out in the future and just uh, pre-press them and take the cardboard out anyway. I'm not really too bothered. And if you wanna put the cardboard back in afterwards as a packaging thing, then that's simple enough to do anyway. If I can get it in, I can't get it in. <laughs> there we go, that way around. So yeah, there you go. That will be on there forever and a day. That's not gonna peel off. You don't wash these nowhere near. Um, in fact, I don't really know anyone who washes a baseball cap anyway. So uh, the problem of longevity and the, the, um, the thing cracking and peeling and all that isn't really gonna matter, as it doesn't matter with your T-shirts. So there you go. Another little learning on the, on, on the fly with a new piece of kit and some new materials. As I say, that is your learning curve. You're gonna, you're gonna waste some products at the beginning. Um, I, it doesn't bother me. This probably cost about, I don't know, uh, just a pound, something like that. Plus a little t-shirt transfer out of a sheet. I've got three of these uh, transfers out of one sheet of transfer paper anyway. So it's cost a pennies over a pound basically. So. Um, That'll go in the bin, not worried about it. Look, straight away. And that's part of your learning curve. I now know through my learning curve in front of you, so that you may, you may, you may have seen that one come out first of all and think, oh God, what's the matter? Whatever. We've just proved now to get over a problem. We know it's not the heat press because it's constant. The temperature was constant, the time was constant. The only things we changed, as I said to you, was how, how we actually pressed the unit and you saw that with me. So. Anyway, hope that was of your use to you. Don't be frightened of having a go with dark t-shirt transfers. And don't forget that you don't only have to press on t-shirts with t-shirt transfers. These transfers, a lot of people slag them off. But these transfers have been created by, not by me, just because I, I use them, a lot of people say, oh, they're, they're rubbish, they're, they're, they peel and crack and all that. Well, you can see, the colour reproduction is absolutely great. There's no problem with that at all. And I use the cheapest, rubbishish, dye-based inks, you might go into a form and say, oh, you need pigment inks, because you know it don't seem like it's, it, the, the blacks are blacks, not really black and all that. Funny enough, I just had a chap who um, emailed me today, funny enough, and he said, I've done my print, I've got a Galaxy Heat Press, he said, I've got the, um, the same transfer papers that you use, I've done it for the same time and the same duration, but the blacks are not coming out solid, I'm very black. Right, well, let's just take a look at this. Let's, let's get you near to that black on there. Now, can you see how black that is? That is blacker than black. There is no sign of, it couldn't get any blacker. Now, when I pulled that image off of the internet and brought it into Photoshop, 
that black was nowhere near in photo off the image of the record cover someone had put up. That black was nowhere near as black as it was there. So all I did, I went into the adjustments window in Photoshop, and then when you click on the adjustments window, you go to uh, brightness and contrast, and open the box up where it says brightness and contrast, and then just slide the contrast lever right the way up. And I looked at the picture again, and it still didn't seem black. So then I went into the adjustments window again, on the same image, and then went to the contrast and brightness thing again. And because every time you do that, it resets back to zero. And then I slid it further up again. I've done that for this image. I've done that in total three times to get that image as black as black as what I did there. So if you, if you want to make a black blacker, and it works very well with black and white images like this, for example. Use your adjustments window in Photoshop, brightness and contrast, slide the contrast right up. Look at your image again. If it isn't as black as you want it to be, do it again. Adjustments, brightness and contrast, contrast, slide it up. And then that will get darker and progressively darker and darker every time that you do it. Just a little tip there if you do use Photoshop. And that's for that chap, as I said to you, if your blacks aren't as black. Because I did tell him to do that, but that's just reminding me now because I've had to do that myself today. So you've got to learn how to get over problems. If you get a problem, there are ways around it. Now, I can't tell you that. With my experience, I can't put all that information in a DVD. But as I think of it, like now, for example, I can give you these little pointers as to how I've got over problems. Just like the hat problem. Just like the people who rubbish T-shirt transfers. Like that one. Five, just over five months old, been washed over 30 times. That's wearable. Look, you can wear that. So don't listen to what other people say that dark T-shirt transfers are rubbish, full stop. There's a lot of scientific people who have created that product, nothing to do with me, who have created these products for the market. They've been tested and tested and tested before they ship them out worldwide. But in the same breath, there are a lot of copycat companies out there who produce rubbish T-shirt transfers, and a lot of T-shirt transfers are only for one or two washes, and then they will peel and crack. So if you're using the wrong ones, you, you're going to expect that sort of thing to happen. I know these don't. I've been using these for over 10, or, well, I've been using these for 10 years, and I know they don't. This item's never going to get washed nowhere near the length of a T-shirt every week or whatever. So it's going to stay like that. Do you get the idea? It's common sense, really. Abs anyway, I'm going to leave you with that one. Hope you've enjoyed this little video. Don't forget to check out my other videos. I do get so many people asking questions that I've actually answered in another video. So look through the playlist. If you're interested in the t-shirt printing business, have a look for all my videos in there because you'll find lots of little tips and tricks in the videos online, all for free. Or if you want to take that one step further and actually learn how to do this and learn the intricacies of the business on the stuff that we actually do day to day when we're actually printing t-shirts, as we've done for the last 10 years to see whether you've got what it takes to do it, then check out my training DVD. And the link is in the description. I'll put the link in the description or visit my UK Internet Marketing School website and it's in the products page. You'll find the DVD there. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.